Hello and welcome to Atmospheric Sciences 240 Meteorological Instrumentation. This is our second lecture and the second lecture covers uh, instrumentation classification. But before we do that, let's talk about lab this coming week. This week is the first week of lab. Uh, lab is on Tuesday and Wednesday and the first lab will cover spreadsheets. So we use spreadsheets quite a bit in this class. Want to make sure that everybody's up to speed and knows how to use spreadsheets. So the lab will be posted at Easy LMS under labs. It'll say lab one. When you click on that, you'll see lots of different options and there will be an instruction uh, page where you can read through the instructions that tells you exactly what you need to do for this lab and how to get prepared. Also, there will be a preparation quiz, meaning that you need to take this quiz before you show up to lab so that you know what is expected of you in lab. And also, it'll tell you or it will quiz you where to show up. So where do you show up? Um, the lab is going to be held in the Odegaard Computer Lab, which is Odegaard Room 102. And we'll do that this week and also next week. And then after that, the labs will be in the atmospheric science department on the fourth floor. So make sure you read through the lab, uh, take the quiz. The quiz will be questions straight from the lab. The quiz is open book, but it needs to be done or completed before the beginning of lab, whether you have a Tuesday lab or a Wednesday lab. Before you show up to lab, you need to have that preparation quiz completed and also read through the instructions and the instructions will tell you what to do and what to bring. So let's get back to instrument classification. Um, there are a few ways to classify meteorological instruments uh, and we base those on uh, location, type, and interrogation. So uh, the sensor location, where is it located? What kind of type of it is it? How does it work? And then how does it uh, get information? So let's take a look at the first one, which is location. Location um, can be further subclassified or divided into whether it's a lab or field instrument, uh, it's a fixed or moving platform, or whether it makes direct or indirect measurements. So let's start with the first one, lab or field instrument. A lab instrument is one that makes measurements inside a lab. And labs are typically very controlled environments. Um, the elements are not changing rapidly. So it's uh, easy to work with uh, lab instruments and also the more convenient, you're there right there in the lab. And most times your office or your, your location is very close to a lab. Um, lab instruments are also more easily monitored, meaning that you can go in and check on them uh, more frequently. Uh, to see if they're still working and if they're still within calibration. And usually they're easier to adapt to experiments, meaning that um, you can uh, rig them or set them up to record data as you like and uh, be able to record things as you want. And then also, uh, since they're right there in the lab, typically it's much easier to transfer data uh, compared to a field instrument. We'll talk about field instruments next. A field instrument is one that is out in the field, meaning it's out in the elements. So uh, it's uh, out there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, it's exposed to rain, hail, lightning, and the sun beating down on it, radiation, all sorts of stuff. So the instrument needs to be really, really rugged. It has to be designed to withstand all of the elements. Not only that, but also um, most instrumentation works on a power source, uh, meaning electrical power or elect electricity. So you need to run either a, um, a line out there to hook up the instrument, um, or you can have a battery pack. And the battery can either be solar charged, or uh, perhaps you swap the battery out every so often. But most times you need to have some sort of sort, uh, some source of electricity for that instrumentation. Um, another problem is trying to get the data. Uh, as the instrument 
measures its recording data to uh, some uh, storage device and you either have to drive out and get that storage device whether it be a hard drive or SD card or something like that or um, you need to have uh, some sort of telecommunication uh, capability whether it be uh, internet phone line uh, satellite but um, you need to get that data somehow so it's a little bit harder than a lab instrument and then of course there are laws that govern what can be out in a field and um, these are state uh, local and also federal laws uh, for example I used to work for a company called weather modification incorporated we set up radars uh, in given locations to do cloud seeding. And before we set up a radar in a given location for a field project, we'd have to get land. We'd have to rent land. And then we'd have to check the zoning um, on the land. And then also we'd have to contact the Federal Communication Commission because radars are transmitters. Um, they're electromagnetic radiation uh, being propagated through the atmosphere by the radar. So you have to have it uh, radiate in a particular wavelength and a particular power. Um, and then uh, finally, um, of course, anywhere you go, there are teenagers or maybe even older adults who like to damage things, vandals. And you can see that just driving around North Dakota or out in the West, any highway sign probably has one or two bullet holes in it. And uh, as a result, um, you need to make sure that your instrument is, is kind of camouflaged. Maybe it's um, not right next to the road. Maybe it's a little bit farther inland in a field or something like that. So sensor location uh, is important uh, for making sure that your instrument uh, continues working. Another classification method is, uh, is the instrument uh, fixed or is it moving? So a fixed platform measures weather conditions um, or me measures conditions, makes measurements at a given location. The location is not moving. And when we make measurements of some property uh, at a given location over time, we call that a Eulerian reference frame, meaning that um, the location is not moving. The only thing that is changing is time. So if you like calculus, that would be a partial derivative with respect to time. And there are many different examples of um, instruments that are fixed. Uh, things like rain gauges or anemometers or um, uh, radars, actually. Um, wind profilers you may not be familiar with, but these instruments really don't move. They're in a given location. They're constantly monitoring the atmosphere. Now, a movable platform is one where the instrument is attached to something that's moving. So not only are you measuring temperature, not temperature, but any parameter, how it changes over time, but also you're measuring how it changes as you move across the ground whether it be to the north, south, east, or west, or a combination of those. An example here is temperature. Um, you know that when the sun goes down, the temperature decreases with time in a given location. But then also, if you're moving to the northeast, you'll see a temperature change, a temperature gradient, because perhaps temperatures are colder to the north and warmer to the south. We call this a Lagrangian reference frame, where you're moving within the medium. Uh, whether it be the atmosphere, oceans, or other types of medium. So here are a few examples of movable platforms. Um, of course, aircraft, it's pretty obvious, but a lot of people don't realize that radio sons, balloons that are sent up through the atmosphere are a movable platform. When you look at a weather map, you see that um, the uh, measurements from the radio sond are located right above a given location. Uh, for example, weather balloons are launched from Bismarck every day. And if you look at the weather charts from the surface all the way up through 300 millibars or 250, you'll see that the temperature is recorded right above Bismarck. But that's not the case. If the winds are very strong, then the temperature that the balloon is measuring, it could be 100 or 150 miles downwind of the station. So keep that in mind. And another way to classify the location 
of a sensor is whether it's being measuring direct, directly or indirectly. And what that means, uh, a direct measurement is also in Latin called in situ, and that is when the sensor is surrounded or immersed with the property that it's trying to measure. For example, a thermometer is surrounded by air and air is in contact with the thermometer. So that would be direct sensing. And typically direct, direct sensing is more accurate, uh, but not everything can be measured directly. Sometimes we have to measure it indirectly. So here are some examples of uh, in situ or direct measurements, thermometers, barometers, anemometers. Uh, there are a lot of different type of meteorological instruments that measure the atmosphere directly. Now, an indirect measurement, which we call remote sensing, is where the sensor is far away from what you're trying to measure. Uh, it's remote or removed from the property that you're trying to measure. So uh, with remote sensing, typically we use proxy variables. In other words, you can't measure what you want to measure directly, so you have to use something else, some kind of uh, substitute that tells you something. And that seems kind of muddled. We'll get, I'll give a few examples here, it'll make more sense. But you have to know the relationship between uh, the signal that you send out and what comes back and what you're trying to measure. A great example is radar. Radar doesn't really um, measure directly rain or snow or precipitation. What radar measures is microwave energy or the power that's reflected or refracted back from raindrops, snowflakes, hailstones, and the like. So um, we can come up with proxies. Uh, you know, the proxy is the radar energy, but that's related to things we want to know, like storm intensity and how how heavy or how fast the rain is falling, the rainfall rate. Other examples of remote sensing: uh, satellites are uh, above the Earth. They're not measuring. They're not surrounded by the atmosphere. They're looking down on our atmosphere, but uh, they use uh, once again electromagnetic radiation uh, in the visible and infrared wavelengths to uh, measure properties in the Earth's atmosphere and also the clouds. So uh, with remote sensing, um, you can't directly measure the properties, but we have to come up with a proxy. Um, and that proxy can infer if we make some studies, empirical studies, it can tell us a lot about um, the, pro the, the thing that we're trying to measure. For example, uh, a thunderstorm, um, looking at precipitation, we can, with radar, uh, we can infer uh, the drop sizes, how big the drops are, and the number of drop sizes, and maybe even perhaps what they're made of. But there is going to be some error because we're not directly measuring it, we're using a proxy. And a lot of times um, the relationship between the proxy and what you're trying to measure is not exact. So that's a quick overview of um, how we classify instruments. And in the next video, we're gonna watch uh, a few more ways to classify meteorological instruments.